Hello. So as we're getting ready to release some new interesting tools, utilities, uh, I was looking back through my history and what I've released and I realized that 27 years ago this month, April of 1994, I released my first software package or for software program. My friend, well, I was involved in the BDS scene and my friend was ran at the BDS and he had become the manager of an art group in the scene, a very small one. They just started from the merging of two other art groups called Havoc. And so they were about to release their first pack and they needed an ANSI art viewer because these ANSI art pieces, instead of being a full screen, they would be multiple screens, be 80 characters wide, but then they would be possibly even hundreds of lines long and they would be scrolling over a BBS, basically a BBS modem speeds, 9600 baud or so, sometimes a lot less. And um, typically, people could just type uh, at the DOS prompt, you know, type and add out a uh, ANSI thing, and there you go, it's one screen. But when it's my, many different screens, then you just get the end of it, and there's no real good way to page in this because pagers didn't support ANSI escape sequences. And so art groups had their own viewers that would parse that out and then show them properly. And of course, it's not legit to take somebody else's viewer and use that, but we needed a viewer. And so a um, couple of the coders that he had tapped to do this fell through. I was there and I knew assembly. I've been coding. And so I, had I wrote one. I wrote one in assembly. And I was really proud of it. It was 1,902 bytes all told. And Basically, you could pass it some number of ANSI files, and you could browse through them. And not only that, which means you could scroll up and down and everything, you could also change modes and view them in VGA mode. So this is 640 by 480, and I'm directly writing to the frame buffer in, uh, the, sorry, the video memory even, in DOS mode assembly. And it works pretty legit. I was pretty proud of this thing, 1,902 bytes. Well, so my friend extolled his virtues in the art pack, and he also asked when I would be working on the next thing. I, we've been talking about uh, CRAD Draw, we called it, an uh, ANSI drawing program, because the Draw, the leading ANSI drawing program of the time, was limited to 100 lines long. And what artists would do when they wanted to make anything longer than that was they'd make multiple stages of it and then stitch them together, and which had some issues, but was more or less mostly just tedious. And so in the May 1994 art pack for Havoc, there was a program called Dark Draw, which I had written, and that is also, that is almost 10K, but actually half of that is a help screen, and um, it's also written in assembly. And so if you run that, here it's a very simple ANSI art drawing program, and you can draw things with the function keys and change the colors and you know, draw stuff. Great. I'm not much of an ANSI artist, that's why I was a coder in the scene, but this is also still pretty cool. You can see down there at the bottom, this is the, it has 23 out of almost 4,000 lines allowed. I did some clever tricks with real mode segments in order to pull this off. And I'm really actually happy that DOSBox can figure this out and still run this thing, thing, thing. And so let me load up this persistence of time drawing. This is persistence of time as a name of a BDS. And Nightbreed is the artist who drew this uh, header for them or banner for them. And as he says, this is the first project he drew with Dark Draw. He was actually a registered user. He paid me $20 to have a copy that watermarked his images. And um, just because he liked it so much, it was just an, an easy way to do what he needed to get done. And so it's got some features like, you know, block, uh, cut and paste, and stuff like that. It also has the ANSI, the VGA viewing mode like this, which you can scroll up and down. And um, interestingly, also, there's a couple of uh, this is an alpha version. It never was formally completed, but um, if you page up beyond this, it's like it goes into a no man's zone here, and you can see all this gibberish. And it turns out this is actually the code of Tark Draw itself. And because it's only 10K or so, it actually fits on the screen here. So this is an interesting little relic of time. Uh, I don't think many people are still using Dark Draw. If you are, let me know. But we are planning on releasing Dark Draw 2 for Linux and Mac systems because I feel like there is a dearth of 
ANSI art drawing tools. There actually are several, but they're all windowed and they lack some basic support. They look, use old school fonts and colors, and I think it's important to start embracing Unicode. And terminals these days have 256 colors in them and to make it easier to do that kind of stuff. And anyway, I think that if you're drawing art for the terminal, it's super usefully drawing art in the terminal. So that's the next thing. We'll be releasing this actually very shortly here, but I wanted to give a tour back into the time when, 27 years ago, Dark Draw one was released, then 27 years later, now in 2021, Dark Trot 2 finally will see the light of day. Thanks for watching.